All right, we're going to cover 1.4 of our BJU Algebra 2 textbook, and it's about quotients of polynomials. So before we get into dividing polynomials, we need to review some exponent properties. So that's where we're going to start, talking about exponent properties. Let's begin with the quotient property. The quotient property says that if you have bases that are the same and they are a quotient, then you will subtract the exponents. Okay? You can only do this if x is not equal to 0. So why does this work? That's what we want to know. Why is this even possible? Well, let's look at an example. Let's say we have a to the fourth over a to the second. If we were to expand a to the fourth, we would have a times a times a times a. If we were to expand a to the second, we would have a times a. If we were to reduce this, this a goes into this a, and this a goes into this a, leaving us two a's, which is a squared. However, we could also use this property up here and say, well, we're going to subtract our exponents, 4 minus 2, 4 minus 2 is 2, so we end up with a squared. All right, next property that we're going to talk about I want to talk about the negative exponent property. Okay, which says that if you have a negative exponent, you need to take the reciprocal of the base. So if your base is x, it's going to become 1 over x and your exponent is going to become positive. Again, x cannot be 0. So let's try an example. Let's say we have 4 to the negative 6 power. So we have a negative exponent, so we need to take the reciprocal of the base. Since our base is 4, the reciprocal is 1 over 4, and then our exponent becomes positive, so 4 to the positive 6. 4 to the 6th power is 4,096. Let's try another one. Let's try x to the negative 3rd power. So we're going to take the reciprocal. The reciprocal of x is 1 over x and our exponent becomes positive. What if we have 1 over x to the 8th? I'm sorry, negative 8. In this scenario, when we take the reciprocal, the reciprocal of 1 over x is x, and then our exponent becomes positive. The next property that I want to talk to you about is the power of a quotient power of quotient property, which says that if you have a quotient, let's say x over y, to a power a, it's almost like you're going to distribute that power. So you're going to end up with x to the a over y to the a. Let's try an example. Let's say we have f to the sixth, g to the third, over f to the second, g. So using our properties, we know that we have f to the six minus two and g to the three minus one, because there's an invisible one on this g. So 6 minus 2 is 4, 
So that's f to the fourth, and three minus one is two, so that's g squared. All right, now that we have reviewed our exponents properties, let's talk about dividing polynomials by monomials. So poly means more than one term, mono means one term, right? So we're dividing a multi-term by one term. So the rule is divide each add-in or each term by the denominator. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's say we have 3x cubed y plus x to the sixth y to the second minus 4x squared y to the fifth plus 8xy to the seventh. We're dividing that by xy to the second. So we need to divide each add in by our denominator. Okay, so this denominator is going to go underneath each and every term. So we've got 3x cubed y over xy squared plus x to the 6y squared over xy squared minus 4x squared y to the fifth over xy squared plus 8xy to the seventh over xy squared. So now we simplify. This x cancels one of, one of those x's, leaving us two. This y cancels one of those y's. So now we've got three x squared over y. Here, this x cancels one of these x's and the y squared is canceled completely, leaving us just x to the fifth. Here, this x cancels one of these x's. These two y's cancel two of those y's. So now we've got four x y cubed. And here we've got this x cancels this x. Two of these x's cancels two of those, leaving us eight y to the fifth. We check to see if anything can be combined and nothing can be combined. So this is our final answer. Let's try another example like that. Let's say we've got 72 x cubed y z to the second plus 12xy to the fourth z, and we're gonna divide that by 6xyz. So again, our denominator is gonna become the denominator of every term. So we've got 72x cubed y z squared over 6xyz plus 12xy to the fourth z over 6xyz. So now we get to canceling. Six goes into 72 12 times. This x will cancel one of those x's. The y's cancel out completely, and this z cancels out one of those z's, leaving us 12x squared Z. Over here, this 6 goes into 12 twice. The x's cancel completely. This y cancels one of those y's, and our z's cancel completely, leaving us 2y cubed. You see if anything can combine, nothing can combine, so this is our final answer. All right, now we're going to look at the steps 
for long division. So the steps for long division are the steps that you learned when you learned how to do long division. Except for now, we're going to apply that to polynomials, but it's the same process. Step one, you're gonna divide the first outside term into the first inside term. Step two, you multiply. Step three, you subtract. And step four, you bring down. So just like the long division you learned in elementary. Let's try an example. Mwah. Let's do x cubed minus 5x squared minus 3x plus 15, and we're dividing by x minus 5. So we have to set this up as a long division problem. So x minus 5 is our divisor. Our dividend is x cubed minus 5x squared minus 3x plus 15. So divide the first into the first, right? How many times does x go into x cubed? Or you can think of it like this, x times what is x cubed? Well, x times x squared is x cubed. So now we're going to multiply x squared by x minus 5. x squared times x is x cubed x squared times negative 5 is negative 5x squared. All right, so that was the multiply step. Now we have to subtract. Now we have to subtract. So we're subtracting, so we're changing our signs. So x cubed minus x cubed goes away. Negative 5x squared plus 5x squared goes away. And then we bring down our next term, negative 3x. So what? times x is negative 3x, negative 3. Now we multiply. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 15 is positive 15. All right, so we have to go ahead and bring down this 15 so we can have something to add to. We have to subtract, so we're changing our signs, changing our signs. This becomes positive. This becomes negative. Negative 3x plus 3x is 0. 15 minus 15 becomes 0. We've got no re remainder. And our answer is x squared minus 3. Let's try another one. Let's try 2x squared plus 11x plus 2 divided by x plus 7. So we set it up as a long division problem. And we start with thinking what times x is 2x squared? Well, to get 2x squared, we have to multiply x by 2x. Now we multiply, 2x times x is 2x squared, 2x times seven is 14x. Now we subtract, so we're changing our signs. This becomes minus and this becomes minus. 2x, minus, 2x squared minus 2x squared cancels. 11x minus 14x becomes negative three x. And we bring down our next term. So what times x is negative 3x. Well, x times negative 3. So negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. Now we change our signs. So 
So negative 3x plus 3x cancels. 2 plus 21 is 23. So we can't bring anything else down. So we've got our remainder of 23. So remainder 23. You can also write your remainder over your binomial and write it as a fraction. So for example, 2x minus 3 plus our remainder, 23, over our divisor, x plus 7. So either one of these is correct. Let's try another example. Let's try 7x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 25 divided by x minus 2. If you notice, not all of our x's are represented. We don't have an x cubed and we don't have an x. When that happens, we actually have to fill in zeros for that when we rewrite it. So x minus 2 is going to go into 7x to the 4th minus 0x cubed minus 3x squared minus 0x minus 25. And those zeros can be pluses or minus However you want, there are zeros, so regardless, it's, it's zero. So let's go ahead and start. X times what is 7X to the fourth? Well, we've got to do 7X cubed, right? So 7X cubed times X is 7X to the fourth. 7X cubed times negative 2 is negative 14X cubed. Now we subtract, so we change our signs. This cancels 0x cubed plus 14x cubed is 14x cubed. And we bring down our next term. So what times x is 14x cubed? 14x squared, right? So 14x squared times x is 14x cubed. 14x squared times negative 2 is negative 28x squared. Now we change our signs. So this becomes minus, this becomes plus, this cancels. Negative 3x squared plus 28x squared becomes neg uh, positive, right? 25x squared. And we bring down our 0x. So what times x is 25x squared? Well, 25x. So 25x times x is 25x squared. 25x times negative 2 is negative 50x. Now we are going to subtract. So this becomes minus, this becomes plus. This cancels, you've got 50x bring down the minus 25. Now what times x is 50x? Well, 50, right? So 50 times x, 50x. 50 times negative 2, negative 100. You go ahead and change our signs. We get 0. 100 minus 25 is 75. So we've got a remainder of 75. All right, so it's important to make sure your terms are written so that every exponent is represented. And also that your exponents are going from largest to smallest. You might have to rewrite your problem before you start dividing. Let's try one last example, I've got a cubed minus b cubed divided by a minus b. All right, so I'm going to show you what will happen if not all the variables show up, okay? So a times what is a cubed? a squared. Now multiply, a times a squared is a cubed. 
Now I've got a squared times negative b is negative a squared b. And now when I switch my signs, this becomes minus and this becomes plus. This cancels and now I've got an a squared b. So now I have to think what times a is a squared b? Well, it's a b, right? So a times a b is a squared b. And then a b times negative b is negative a b squared. And I don't, I don't have anything that I can combine that with. So now I've got to switch my signs. This cancels, leaving me a b squared. A times what is b squared? a b squared, just b squared. So b squared times a is a b squared. b squared times negative b is negative b cubed. Oh, that's something that I can combine, right? So now I'm gonna switch my signs. This cancels, oh, and that cancels. So I don't have a remainder there. And this becomes my answer right here. All right, that's all I have for this, this video. Make sure you check to see what problems you need to do with this video. Make sure you check and get those problems finished because they are due at the same time as the video notes are.